Willie Nelson shoulders our sorrow when he sings songs like Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain. Elsewhere, the icon keeps us dreaming and laughing or reminds us of what true love really looks and feels like. You are always on my mind. What's your favorite Willie Nelson song? He's a master storyteller with tales only topped by his real life ups and downs, failed marriages, got him, arrests, yeah, he's had a few, a gunfight with family, of course. 30 years later, we chuckle about songs from his IRS tapes. This is a collection of songs that's very special to me, and I hope you'll enjoy listening to them as much as I enjoyed playing them for you. We smile when we see his mugshot after arrests for pot possession, knowing full well the lawman won't slow him down, but we don't talk about the greatest tragedy in his life, one that includes a bittersweet direct mail album that few people know about. In fact, you can't even find it mentioned on Wikipedia. I'm Billy Dukes for Taste of Country, and few will argue that Willie Nelson doesn't belong on Country Music's Mount Rushmore. He's weathered the storms, and storms have a way of finding Willie. In November 1990, the IRS seized nearly everything he owned over a tax bill. Thirteen months later, on Christmas Day, his oldest son Billy was found dead at his home outside of Nashville. A coroner would later rule the 33-year-old's death a suicide, although soon that fact would be questioned. We'll get there. The Associated Press touched on Nelson's grief, but also on how well everyone believed Billy was doing the days leading up to Christmas. People magazine quoted Billy's best friend Buddy Frank, who said they were, quote, kicking up like best friends do until 2 a.m. on Christmas Eve. No cause for concern, but quote, the only problem he had was with what killed him, friend Lou Mullins would say, referring to alcohol. It's something that's plagued other Nelsons as well. In 2012, Lucas Nelson told the St. Louis Post-Dispatch he was drinking too much and running away from everything when he wrote his Wasted album. Quote, I almost died, honestly, Lucas said. I've never experienced anything so devastating in my life, Willie would say in 1992. It was his lowest of lows. I don't have to do one thing that I don't want to do except for missing you. But about that unfinished album, at the time of his death, Billy, whose full name was William Hugh Nelson Jr., was working on a gospel album, and with his father's help, it get finished. An Amazon editorial review for that album, Peace in the Valley, says the IRS actually seized it along with everything else in that 1990 raid, but they started to return his possessions by 1992, and it bowed in 1994. Here's where things get murky. The South Florida Sun Sentinel ran a quasi-review of the album that knocks a few facts out of order. For starters, it claims that Billy died on May 24th. They tell a story that Willie didn't know his son could even sing until they teamed up for a show in Dayton, Ohio, to sing May Axton's My Body is Just a Suitcase for My Soul. My body is just a suitcase for my soul. That same article claims that Billy died when he jumped or fell from a loft in the family cabin and got tangled up in twine, going as far as to call the whole thing an accident. That's a detail repeated absolutely nowhere else on the internet. If his death wasn't by suicide, his family has never tried to change how history was written. History does have a way of molding the truth, but reports from the early 90s do make one thing clear. Willie did everything he knew how to do to help his son battle his demons. Sadly, it's a battle he would not win. I'm Billy Dukes, and this has been another episode of The Secret History of Country Music. If you liked this episode on Willie Nelson, you may enjoy one from last season about his ruthless poker games, as told by the people who've been there. Be sure to subscribe and review this episode below, and as always, thanks for watching.